Altar 1. In the next few weeks, we're going to learn all about the Episcopal Altar. We are going to learn the names of the items that belong on the altar, and we are going to learn how to put the altar together. I would recommend watching the video the first time with your parent or guardian. Then, with your parents or guardian's help, go collect all the items you will need to do the day's work. I would then re-watch the video, pausing to take the time to make the materials into your altar items. You may need some help from your parents or guardians using scissors, hot glue, or permanent marker. Just ask them. At the end of the fourth week, you will have all the altar items made and you will be able to practice putting your altar together by yourself. The altar is a special place in our church where we come together with our church family to share a meal called Communion. We also call it Holy Eucharist. Holy Eucharist reminds us of Jesus' last night with his disciples before his resurrection. You might have heard this special meal called the Last Supper. During the first week, we will make or gather our altar, fair linen, corporal, purificator, chalice, paten, candlesticks and candle holders, and a cross. We are going to begin our altar by choosing a box or small table to be our altar. If you are using a box and you would like to cover up any words, you can use white or brown butcher paper or contact paper to cover the box. If you choose to use a box with a flat top, then this may be used to hold the altar items when you are not using them. If your box isn't perfectly flat, you might want to add a piece of foam board on the top to give you a nice flat surface. You may want to decorate your altar with a chrismon or a Christian symbol. Your parents can help you search for one on the internet. I have chosen one called an Irish or Celtic cross which is a cross with a circle in the middle to symbolize eternity. Once you have your table ready, then you are going to want to use some white cloth to make a fair linen, a corporal, and a purificator. Fair linen. The word fair means light colored, and linen is a beautiful material. You need to cut one piece of white cloth to fit the top of your table or box. Once you have your fair linen the proper size, you will want to cut out five white crosses out of fun foam, about an inch in size, and attach one cross to each corner and one in the middle of your fair linen. When you are finished with your fair linen for the day, you may roll it up on a paper towel center in order to keep it nice and flat with no wrinkles or folds. Corporal. This word is related to the word corpus, which means body. The second piece of white cloth needs to be approximately 12 inches by 12 inches square. In the middle of the square, you want to draw a red cross with a permanent marker. Don't forget to get help from your parent or guardian. A corporal is folded in thirds one direction and then in thirds perpendicular to your first folds. Purificator. This is the fine white linen that purifies or cleans the edge of the chalice after someone drinks from it. It also needs to be about 12 inch by 12 inch square, but instead of folding it into ninths, thirds by thirds, it will be folded into sixths. First fold it into thirds, like a corporal, but then fold it perpendicular in half. You may add a white cross to the center edge of the purificator. Today, when you put your altar together, you will first lay down your fair linen, and then you may add your candlesticks and candle holders at either side, and you may put your cross in the middle at the back, and in front of the cross, you will place your chalice and your paten, or small plate. Please see the pictures and illustrations. If you don't have a standing cross, you can make one out of foam board by drawing and cutting out a cross and attaching the bottom to a small base. I used hot glue because it is fast, but you will need to get an adult to help you or use another kind of glue. Next week, we will learn about a few more parts of the altar.